Hey, this is Jason with 4W Knives. Uh, project today is going to be making this, I'll call it a hunting knife, uh, pretty close to a lot of the projects that I normally do. Um, even though I should be fulfilling some orders, uh, cleaning the shop, a hundred other things, I decided I'm going to enter another contest. A uh, couple of uh, YouTubers, there's four of them, they're doing a competition and They've opened it up for some viewers. Nothing quite like the uh, fantasy build that I just did. Uh, nothing to quite that level, but it's still really cool. Um, I love how these guys are trying to include everybody and getting everybody involved. Uh, I'm no way in the competition against those guys. They're uh, way more advanced, way bigger uh, YouTube channels than I am. I'm just entering the viewer part, kind of like I did in the fantasy challenge. Uh, just to kind of give me something to aspire at, uh, to be. So anyways, I'm going to be making one of these. And again, it's real similar to, uh, some of the hunting knives that I've been making. Uh, so I'm going to use theirs. I'll probably adjust the handle a little bit or something like that. Uh, uh, and then I'm going to be doing a different steel. I'm, I'm thinking towards like a Damascus Cumai, uh, which would be, Damascus outer layers with uh, copper and then some type of high carbon steel for the core. I haven't decided exactly what, uh, but I'll fill you in as I go. All right, so plan is going to be using some copper. 60 layer Damascus that I'd already made up. And we'll add in a couple of layers of 15 and 20. And we'll do a QMI. I'll do four layers of the copper. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of the prep, but not a whole lot. Once I get it all stacked, that's where uh, the video will really kick off. All right, so here we are, mostly cleaned up, or at least ground down. So I've got a layer of Damascus, copper, get my fingers on it, 15 and 20 copper Damascus core, copper again, 15 and 20, followed with copper, and then another Damascus outside layer. I will put this in a vise, squeeze it together, and basically the next step is I will form a box around it with this mild steel. That way when the copper gets to the liquid state, it does not melt out. So hopefully this works because I've got about $60 worth of steel in my hands, and that's not counting the propane and labor that it took to make the Damascus. Uh, so hopefully it all goes well, so I'm not wasting all this money in steel. When working with copper or cumi in this case, uh, you're not really operating at forge welding temperatures because you're not really forge welding. Uh, what you're doing, I believe they call it brazing. Um, the copper turns to a liquid state much earlier than steel does, so you can work at a lower temperature. Uh, I close it in to avoid any of that liquid copper from shooting out. If you watch one of my early videos uh, where I did a cumi, it turned out good, but it did have a point to where it squirted everywhere. Uh, all my welds hold on this, and I was pumped with that. All right, got all the forging finished. Now uh, I'll start my stock removal process. So this is the knife design that they put up for the challenge. I thought about adjusting the handle a little bit uh, and even on the grind to do the bevel the way I've been doing my uh, hunting knives lately, but I figured it's a challenge to make this knife. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it uh, as close to this shape and everything as what I can. So I've just used magnets, cut out their paper like everybody else would do. And I've got the 
shape. I just drew used a Sharpie to put it on there. So now I'll just use a cutoff wheel and uh, should make short work of it. I'm just hoping once I cut into it that I have uh, a solid piece of uh, Kumai, I guess. I did anneal this overnight. I just left it in the forge uh, just to make it where it wasn't quite so hard. I knew whenever I drilled the pinholes, that was going to be important. Uh, a while back, I had some leftover Kumai and I went to make a knife out of it and it wouldn't drill, so I threw it in the forge. I was afraid I was gonna get it too hot, and I ended up working it too cold, and it ended up uh, coming apart. So I wanted to avoid all that headache, so I have already annealed this piece. It works out nice, and I get all the pinholes drilled with no problem. All right, so I mark the bevels similar to that that was on the template and get my center line and I start on my grind. Uh, something I've started doing differently on my flat grinds. Uh, I used to just do the 45 degree and get down to the uh, center line. Now I just try to keep it about the same angle that I am going to do the entire bevel and I just work my way to that center line that way. Uh, it's, it's kept me straighter. Uh, I don't know where I picked up that, you know, grinding the 45 degree angle, but, uh, I like this way a lot better. I was watching one of Walter Sorrell's videos and he had mentioned, made a comment. I don't know. I may have even misunderstood him, uh, but he just held it at the angle of the, uh, intended bevel. Uh, so I tried that and, and I've liked it so far. This is an old heat treat oven that uh, picked up from Fort Reno. Uh, I didn't actually pick it up. Uh, a friend of mine did, and he gave it to me. It doesn't. It's not thermostat control, or the, it doesn't work properly, uh, but it does get up to good temps. I just have to really monitor it so it doesn't get too hot. Uh, it's just not very efficient. takes a long time. So I use my magnet here, make sure that I get it up to uh, that critical temperature and then I let it uh, cool to air temperature or outside temperature, and I do this three times. Uh, then I get it back up to critical temperatures, and I uh, quench it in the oil. Uh, it seemed to be a good heat treat. Uh, it was hard. I go ahead and temper it for two cycles at a 400 degrees for two hours, and it's going to come out well. I've got it taped up to keep it protected. I have sanded this thing to 1200 grit, which is a lot for me. Uh, the etch came out really good. The copper is uh, really popping. Uh, I'm, I'm really liking the blade work. So I think that should help set this knife apart from a lot of others. Uh, but I also know the probably the most important part of a knife as far as its appearance, avoiding the heat treat, of course the appearance of the knife is the scales. So I've been back and forth and just sitting out here staring at what I've got and I couldn't decide. I've had some bright colors, I've had some gold colors and I thought, you know, maybe it's not that I need to go flamboyant on the handle scales. Maybe I need to go something simple. That way the knife stands out more or the blade stands out more. So all that leading up to, I've decided to go with my favorite wood that I use, and this is uh, ironwood. And this is a high contrast ironwood. So my plan, I'm gonna use it and hand sand it as much as I can stand to hand sand it and try to get as good of a bright finish on it as possible. And I'm hoping that that works well with the QMI that I've done. So that's the plan. 
anytime I do handles, I never know what's going to be the best. Um, so I'm just hoping. As a lot of you know, there's a lot of levels to knife making. Uh, handle work is one of them. I really feel like I've gotten better at uh, the contouring of my handles and making them better. Uh, this one with the thicker scales, I am doing what I call the Coke bottle shape. I don't know if it truly is a Coke bottle, uh, but all I've done here is clean it up, got it uh, square on both sides and flat. I draw in the shape that I want, uh, put a little couple markers so I can keep uh, everything lined up properly. I use a flat platen to get the proper angle that I want. And then I'll go over to the other uh, 2x72 and I will use the wheel to get the uh, flare at the end. Um, I, I just get more comfortable with it. So I'd say if you're struggling with it yourself, uh, just keep trying, keep working at it. I get more and more confident each time that I do one of these. Alright, once I get the handle work finished, I take it to the 2x72 using a 220 grit belt and sharpen it up. Uh, once I get the initial edge or the secondary bevel put on this, I will take it to the workshop uh, where I go through their progression of belts, ending with a leather belt that allows me to basically strop it. Uh, I find this is a really important part for me and my sharpening. All right, got it pretty much finished. I still need to do another buff, another oil, but other than that, uh, we've wrapped it up. I was able to get it really sharp. And that's all the paper I had that you can see. It's just, it's nice. So uh, I'm gonna go buff it up, do the last finishing oiling on it, and then we'll get you some photos. Uh, I appreciate you watching and go like and subscribe. This is uh, by far my favorite knife I've ever made. Uh, I'm going to put it in the contest and uh, hopefully they like it as much as I do. Uh, but I really do appreciate you guys. Uh, I know uh, my videos aren't the best, but I try and uh, someday I may get the hang of it. So I uh, thank you and uh, we'll catch you next time. Okay, as we uh, get to see these final pictures, I uh, will thank the gentlemen who are putting this little contest on. Uh, B. Cohen Knives, Redbeard Ops, Kyle Rower Knives, and Wingles Workshop. Uh, these guys are next level. They seem to be really good guys. Uh, I've watched all their YouTube channels for a while, and uh, I think it's awesome that they're doing this. Uh, if I can figure it out, I'll put some of their links in the description. I don't know. I'm still learning all this stuff, so we'll have to wait and see. But uh, I do appreciate you guys watching. Uh, let me know what you think. I'd be curious. So uh, until next time, have a good one.